New patch, new Pro Warrior guide, let's start. The Pro Warrior's core gameplay is about rage management. Two ways to build rage, first by using rotational abilities, secondly by auto attacking or getting auto attack. Rage is spent on either offense or defense. For offense, you can spend rage on revenge for good frontal AoE damage or execute a single target hit when your target is below 20% health. You spend rage on offense only when you are certain about surviving. For defense, you spend rage on either shield block or ignore pain. Shield block costs 30 rage and heavily mitigates physical damage taken, so maximizes uptime here. It comes with two charges on a 16 second recharge timer. Then there's ignore pain, costing 35 rage. It gives an absorb shield that's good against all damage profiles including magic or bleeds. For core rotation, let's focus on abilities with less than 45 seconds cooldown. Before pulling mobs, check your stuns first. Use battle stuns to maximize DPS. Use defensive stuns if you need the extra mitigation to survive. Use thunderclap whenever it's ready, followed by shield slam on cooldown. Your rotation might proc a reset for shield slam's cooldown. It's like playing whack-a-mole, press shield slam the moment it's ready. Next, if you have no need to use Rage for defense, use Revenge when mobs are outside execute range or when a free Revenge procs. If a mob is below 20%, you can then spend Rage on execute. For max DPS on single target fights, prioritize Shield Slam over Thunderclap in the rotation. Lastly, don't lock in your rotation. Impending Victory is used as a small self-heal when you need one. Let's talk about your big cooldowns starting with your offensive CDs. Avatar boosts your damage by 20% combined with the popular Unstoppable Force talent, it lets you spam Thunderclap more. Shield Charge is another popular talent, it lets you get close to the enemy and dish out AoE damage on impact for quick threat. Thunderous Roar is a go-to talent for many, it deals AoE bleed damage over time. Ravager is another popular talent, pulsing AoE damage where it lands and generating rage. In Amplats, it's good practice to have one offensive CD ready for a new pool for snap threat. For defensive cooldowns, you have Shield Wall as your biggest defensive CD, reducing all types of damage by 40% for 8 seconds. Last Stand gives you a boost in your health pool, handy when you are low or at risk of getting one-shotted. Demoralizing Shout is an AoE that debuffs enemies near you, reducing the damage they deal to you by 25%. It's ineffective against casters that's far off and environmental damage sources. Rallying Cry increases the max health of your entire group, used for emergencies when the entire group is in trouble, and only in the last resort for yourself to stay alive. Then there's Spell Reflection. Though it's below 45 second cooldown, it's a game changer. It lets you reflect a single target spell on you back onto the boss or mob, dealing spell damage that scales with high keystones. You take zero damage when successful, a massive cheese against big tank busters. If no spell targets you during its duration, you get a 20% magic damage reduction, reflecting a spell consumes the buff. For gear, prioritize eye level, it gives more stamina for bigger health pools and more primary strength. For secondaries, prioritize haste first, it gives a faster GCD to generate rage quicker, more rage means more offense and defense. Next, you have versatility. It lets you deal more damage and take 1% less damage for every 2% verse, and it works against all types of damage, including magics and bleeds. Crit is next in the priority, grants a nice DPS boost and better parry chance, but it does nothing to mitigate dots, bleeds, or magic damage that you can't parry. Mastery is the least important, it improves your block chance, but it does nothing to mitigate non-physical damage. Let's talk about talent, all the build input codes are in the description. What you see here is a very standard raid build, especially for single target boss fights. Take note that for raid, you tend to go for into the fray for more DPS, there's no need to get that much shield block uptime via heavy repercussions because you're not tanking the boss all the time. Most likely there's a taunt swap. So the above you see is for raid single target, there's also a raid AoE build that now picks up Thunderlord as you can see. It allows you to use your demo shop more often, you also pick up a bit more rage through blood surge. And then we go from raid AoE to M plus build and this is basically the M plus build changes. You see the note here already changes to basically favor heavy repercussions. It increases your shoe block uptime massively because you're the only tank in the dungeon. Every time you shoe slam, you add to the duration of shoe block by one second, which is great. You also get a lot more control in terms of shockwave. You also get a single target stun through storm bolt. Getting other crowd controls and disorients through intimidating shout, really good as well in M+. So it's mostly utility changes on the class side of the tree, and on the spec side of the tree, it's really going into heavy repercussions for M+. Though, if your shoe block uptime is really good, into the fray probably maximizes your damage more in M+. That's for talents. Quick reminder, if you like the UI in this video, it's free in the description. If you found this guide helpful, smash the subscribe button. More concise guides coming your way. A shout out to my Patreon subscribers. See you soon.